In this video, I'm going to run you through the new shaders we added to the Godot shaders repository. They are all free and open source, MIT licensed, so you can reuse them in any project however you want. You can study them. Anyway, that's the goal. We're sharing them. These are the ones that we added since the first video, among others, but some of the main ones. So the crystals is going to show you how to have a shader that builds upon the spatial material. So if I expand the shader and its parameters here, it's of shader type spatial. And uh, we use that to get the metallic and roughness that we assign at the start of the fragment function. But also there is some animation using the, anim the emission texture and some Fresnel effect. Fresnel being the um, light blue that you have around the edge of the mesh. This shows you how you can simply customize the spatial shader, build upon it, the PBR shader, to add new animations and features. The advanced tune demo is probably the most advanced shader that we have there. It uses a custom rendering model. Godot uses forward rendering normally. This one shows you how to do deferred rendering. That's why there are some glitches in the editor when you use it. At runtime, of course, there's no problem. Francois had to make an editor plugin to visualize the result of the shader in the editor. The advantages are that you have some features that are not available in the built-in shader, like one tune object casting shadows over another. And you have a lot more uh, fine control over the colors of the shadows, some maps to control the different colors of different parts of the character. You would probably need to make a video with Francois on that because it's quite complex. Next, you have the false fields. The false field is a sci-fi effect with some animated shield or something. You have the noise demos. I think I have to ask Francois, but I think he uh, reused and customized the code provided by Gonki. So you have some different noise generator functions. The noises are random, value-based, Perlin noise, Voronoi, and simplex noise. They are the base of many effects in shaders, especially procedural effects. The 3D flag, we have a tutorial about it on our website and on the channel. This shows you how to make a simple flag animation that's, again, entirely procedural, controlled by shaders. The impossible cube demo was there before, but it's been improved thanks to feedback from the Duriel. He told us that we could use some features of the viewport to simplify the scene. So you now just have one stencil view viewport instead of multiple. And probably this improved the performances as well. The impossible cube gives you a portal like effect. When the cube turns, you see through different views and different worlds in a sense. The pixel perfect outline is a nice little one. It keeps the edges, the outline, exactly the same size in 3D, regardless of the zoom level. So it's an important effect for some games added recently. We have some 2D reflections and um, 2D water, not this one, water 2D side scroll. This one that show you how to make side scrolling water with perspective deformation, a shoreline, reflections, and also height deformation with parallax mapping. So these are effects you commonly see in 3D, but that can be absolutely applied to 2D with similar principles. We have a 3D shockwave. The demo doesn't look too great at the moment. We really need to improve it, but it's a shockwave applying to geometry. This one would be a nice candidate for a short video, I think. And finally, we have the 3D water. It's a stylized water made with a simple shader. It currently has some small artifacts you can see here around the rocks, but it shows you, you know, the proximity with the surrounding geometry or intersecting geometry. And we have a bug ticket open. One user had that problem where you have a bit of a shade appearing around bushes and all on the shore, and that still needs fixing um, before the problem was more prominent even, but uh, we need a, a scene to replicate that or something. That's it for the new shaders. Now they are all free and open source available on the repository. 
please go ahead and star it to support its visibility so other people can find the shaders as well. If you'd like to learn how they are made, they are actually, for a fair part, covered in details in our Shader Secrets course. It's actually this course that funded the development of all these free shaders. We are on Kickstarter right now and we actually have reward tiers where you can get our new good course as well as one of the secrets courses that we have here at a lower price. I'll leave links in the description below. But with that, I want to thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun. Let's see one another in the next one. Bye-bye.